Hi, this is going to be the first um, video that we're making at night. <laughs> so, it's 11.30 p.m. Getting a little sleepy. Uh, but I was working on this thing and I thought maybe you want to see a little bit about it. Because it's sort of related. We were talking about shading, but I was using crayons as an example. And... Um, Right now I'm using a pen, uh, pencil, so, um, uh, the thing I'm working on, if I can get the camera just a little bit, here, I'm working on this gardening zine, right, and, uh, here's what we got, this is the draft version, it's a group project, compilation zine, and, um, the of t calligraphy on the front cover. I asked my brother to do this because I like his calligraphy drawings. And uh, basically, on a notebook, he he did in his notebook something like this. Can you see it? It's uh, he used probably pencil to just block off, make the lines, and then he used the pen pen is that just pen and i don't know if you use white white pen after i'm actually not sure but um he drew the outline of the letters in pencil and then colored it in so i wanted to use these words the way they look but uh i um went to staples and then uh shrank it just a little bit and that's what we got. We kind of, I actually had experimented with a bunch of different sizes. Um, and like, uh, you know, and then, um, this is the size that kind of fits on the half of an A4. So then what I'm doing now is I'm taking, this is the draft of the drawing I had made just scribbly with a ballpoint pen in the beginning of the year. And I was just brainstorming it and um i had uh, sketched some of our vegetable sprouts the earth there lotus lotus uh, pedestal um based on buddhist tanka drawings and there's an infinity knot in there somewhere with the, the fruit offering bowl so uh i wanted a, a composition of a drawing like that and then i asked him to do these letters but i've kind of um change the composition since so because i the letters are so beautiful i'd like to give them more um a little emphasis or focus so what i'm working on now um if you can see here's a pencil drawing uh it's a. Uh, How can I get a better angle? Oh, wait a second, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just um, moving the camera. I'm trying to do it slowly so that you don't uh, get dizzy here. There we go. Uh, do you see that? Can you see? No, how my eyes see it is not how the camera's seeing it. All right, so what I'm doing right now is I've on the photocopy, the shrunken photocopy of the text. I'm using this lead pencil, graphite pencil. It's a point nine millimeter, um, but you can use any pencil. Really, I, I was just trying to use a pencil, a lead pencil, so I could have them. Um, you could control with the uh, like a um, the tip. I won't have to keep sharpening it. Stay sharp. This one's 05. Probably could have used that too. Uh, and I'm not sure how dark this lead gets, but it gets dark enough for what I want to do with it. And I've um, adapted this composition to to uh, fit, you know to fit this one and then kind of cleaning up the lines and forms a little bit. Um, the text is now in the center. 
So I've put the sprouts here. The earth is now on the side, kind of where the sun and moon usually are in the tanka. I've put one of the knots up above. I'm going to erase the second one here. Um, and I've framed it so that knot is just above this set of leaves. And so that's kind of like, this kind of goes with the the, and then this goes with the garden. The leaves go with the garden. And then the matrix, which also means network, right? Or environmental material I think would be great if I could kind of line that up with roots with a root system and that that's all floating above uh, the lotus pedestal in the infinite knot which also means you know it's supposed to connotations of any everything's connected and then the issue one is really it's lined up perfectly with the um, offering bowl so issue one's like an offering um, and what I'm doing now, what I did today was at first this, this area was blank. So I found this knot, this root, the road, and, um, seemed like a sign or a coincidence, a happy coincidence. I brought it home, um, and I needed to draw roots, so I just pulled some inspiration from that. I was... I was going to make these spindly roots, but that chunky root, I think, looks better. And, um... Do you want to draw together? Today's not really much of a drawing lesson. I think it's more of a... Co-drawing. Uh, maybe I'm just, like, studio visit sharing what I'm working on, and, um... We can draw together if you want. Maybe we can draw together for a few minutes. So, uh... In terms of like shading work, you know, we were, uh, the, the sort of tutorials I did earlier were crayon based, but in terms of shading work, if you're interested in more detailed line drawings or graphite drawings, uh, things I talked about still stand if you want to practice with a pencil instead of crayon. Um, maybe that's more to your taste. You can get finer, maybe more technical drawings. This is, well, basically what I've been working on for, uh, I, I don't know, whenever I can. Sometimes hours at a time. Sometimes I'll just do a 10 minute, 20 minute, half hour sitting. So, um, you can move your hand just as lightly as you can to touch the page gets, gets you the lighter tones. You can always go darker. And of course, if you need to go lighter, um, this, this is your eraser, that kind of, um, the gray doughy eraser. You can lift, you can pinch it into a shape that you need and press it press it lightly on the graphite where you want to remove it and uh, that allows you to take some graphite off the page without smearing what you're working on. Alright, so it's it's night time so um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to uh, I'm going to kind of shade in color in some leaves right now. I've already done the line work but if you if you want to watch the drawing process you can maybe you want to work on your own thing for a couple minutes I think I'll let this thing run for another two minutes and then you might get a feel of what it's like to work with graphite if this is your kind of something you're interested in or not some people really like the look of pencil drawings, you know. Some people really like the real, realistic photorealism, hyperrealism sort of aesthetic or illustrative. Um, graphite's very uh, uh, what's the word? Kind of like flexible, v versatile, right? 
I guess if you're talking about like tonal value explorations, texture. I wanted to make the petal tips here a little bit darker so that later the um, inside of the lotus can be make that a lighter lighter tone so that it stands out in contrast um yeah so you know what I was thinking if you may or may not feel inspired by this process or like gives you some other ideas but you could um imitate the sort of a collaging effect like why don't you you could print out find an image of something or draw or make your own image of something then scan it change the size shrink it or expand it then print it out then draw on the photocopy so you're you're still saving the original you haven't changed that messed it up at all um you've got variations to experiment with and um yeah i brought this up mainly because this is a exercise to and utilize utilizing your shading skills that's a pretty um good thing to do uh, beginner level too to um practice your your shading with graphite with pencils pencils erasers hb i think is the lightest color lightest tone lead and then what's the highest uh, sorry, I don't use pencil that much, so I forget. Is it nine nine B? Um, sorry, you'll have to research that. I'm not a pencil, a lead graphite enthusiast. I have not I actually haven't used it in a very long time, but it just occurred to me that it was the kind of effect and look that I wanted for this particular illustration. So, I did it myself. Okay, don't need to be an expert. Just go for what you, you know, your ideas, what you want to try. Learn as you go. Forget if it's not useful. As you're working on your pencil drawings or whatever, uh, um, you know, I th I was talking about this eraser, right? You don't have to have this eraser, of course, this one. I mean, I also use the one on the back of the pencil. And um, pressing it instead of rubbing it is uh, uh, better for preserving the line quality. Um, um, and um, I wanted to say that uh, if you need to turn your paper, you know, so that you might find that your hand, if you're working some, on something, like you're working on something here, that's fine, but then you want to move here and then your hand will start to smudge. It just pushes all that graphite off and then you've, you've got a smeary mess. So, um, this is when you wouldn't want to do the thing that I was saying about putting your pinky on the sur surface. You won't want to, don't do that. Avoid putting your hands on the surface wherever you're working. And um, spin your paper so that, I mean, that's one thing you can do. Just turn your paper so that your hand is not resting on it. And you've got your hand on, off on the side. Or thing I learned also was to just take a piece of paper take a piece of paper and um, put it down where your hand would be going down uh, so that you're not smearing it with the oil of your skin um, and that's a way to just protect the thing you're working on but um, my, the, pap the paper the page I'm working on is small enough so that I don't 
haven't had to do that yet. Uh, turning it is enough. So you might want to also be aware of pencil line directions. Because uh, that, that will show up and it affects how your drawing looks. So whether it means you want all your pencil lines going in the same direction or varying. It's not really matter up to you. But just so you start developing an awareness for it. And uh sometimes you get your drawing down and um some white lines and then just go over them later when you're more ready when you feel pretty pretty um good like more certain about where the lines are and what they're doing because uh, easier to erase light lines harder to remove and erase them when you've darkened them so pace yourself and be be patient here be patient to achieve the results you're going for okay um you know i had no intention for how long this video was i thought i thought i'd probably make it short but i also didn't want every video i make to feel like it's in a rush so i have to do that However, shorter videos are easier to upload, and probably people have more patience with them. <laughs> oh, so much going on. But if you want to see the finished result, you can check check it out on my website, or um, I'll probably post about it on Instagram when it's done. That will still be at least another few days, at least another week, or two or three. It's the Garden Zine Project, the Garden Matrix. Okay. Alright, thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Um... Send me feedback or comments, questions if you want. Night.